Most optimization videos sound like a boring chemistry class. And trust me, I hated chemistry. Failed it twice. But I forced myself to listen to Dr. Peter Adia and Dr. Andrew Huberman because my own doctor handed me a diet tablet from 1988. But the problem is most people don't have the patience to sit down and listen to a boring TED talk in slow motion. And that's where I come in. I'm translating three habits that these guys agree on in plain English. Then I'm handing you a stupid, simple 30 day plan. Here's the kicker. Almost nobody gets at least one of them right. I was doing it for years and odds are you're doing the same. Fix that one thing and the rest will fall into place. Let's get to the first habit. Inside all of us is a clock that exists in your brain and my brain and the brain of every animal that we're aware of. Your body runs on a clock and light is the hand that wins it. Morning sunlight flips the on switch, wake up, burn fuel, set hormones. But midnight phone glow tells your brain it's noon in Vegas. Then you wonder why you're wired at 1 a.m. and hungry like a raccoon. Everyone talks about how sleep is important, but no one really explains why. Your body has a master clock in your brain, and that clock is not controlled by your watch. It is controlled by light. In the morning, sunlight hits your eyes and tells your brain time to wake up release cortisol and burn fuel. That same signal starts a countdown timer for melatonin, your sleep hormone that kicks in about 14 to 16 hours later. If you skip this morning light or if you only get it through a glass, that timer gets weaker. Apparently through glass, that signal is 50 times weaker. And at night, when you blast your eyes with bright screen after 11 p.m., your brain thinks it's 12 p.m. in Vegas. So what it does is pushes back that clock and it delays melatonin. And what happens is that it keeps you wired, hungry, and restless. Morning rule, get blasted by daylight outside, five to 10 minutes. No sunglasses if you can help it. That's your brain's on switch. Wake up, burn fuel, act human. Night rule. After 8 p.m., start dimming. And between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., do not stadium light your eyeballs. That's when your brain wants darkness. Hit it with phone glow at 1 a.m. and it thinks you're in a casino, ordering fries and making bad life choices. But why? Bright light after 11 p.m., dense dopamine, the feel-good focus juice. It ruins your mood, ability to learn, your recovery, and you wonder why you end up snacking like Peter Griffin. A quick break. This part's sponsored by Kenyon's Move Plus Pro. We just talked about how light sets your body's clock. I also use light to boost recovery. I'm new to boxing and those punches light up my elbows. After training, I strap on the Move Plus for 10 to 15 minutes and the ache fades fast, drug-free and hands-free. What makes the Move Plus unique is that it combines medical-grade LEDs with targeted laser therapy, a combination you'd normally only find in clinics. It works deep in the joint to boost local blood flow, reduce inflammation and supports healing over time. It's also treating chronic tennis elbow daily. Two weeks in, I've already noticed about 15% drop in pain. Using it couldn't be easier. Strap it on, press on, pick a 10 to 15 minute session, and let it do the work while you relax or work. Link below for a 10% discount. Now back to the habits. Protein by itself stimulates muscle protein synthesis. Ingested protein by itself. You see, protein isn't just food, it's a signal. Every bite is sending a text message to your muscles saying, build, repair, keep. Now lift on top of that and you turn the words into all caps. When you eat protein, about a real dose per meal, your body switches on muscle protein synthesis, the rebuild process. Resistant training adds a second, stronger signal 
mechanical tension, which amplifies that rebuild. You with me so far? And after 40, anabolic resistant means the same meal triggers a small response. So those and consistency matter even more. Many guys stay skinny soft because they miss the per meal protein trigger and their sets aren't heavy enough to create tension. The fix is simple psychology. Send a louder signal with a real protein dose each meal and pair it with a challenging full range lift so your body knows to keep and rebuild muscle. Daily target, 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram in body weight. Dr. Adia often pushes towards the two grams per kilogram. If you're 80 kilograms, 130 to 175 grams, 95 kilograms, 150 to 210. You can easily achieve that if you were to trigger your meals for 30 to 50 grams of protein two, three times a day and supplemented with a scoop here and there to match your numbers. All right, let's recap. So protein puts you in build mode. Lift in, log sit in. Keep muscle, keep metabolism, all right? When that happens, how do you start feeling? You have better recovery, less cravings. Believe me, when you're eating protein instead of carbs, you're less hungry, you don't have as many cravings. Try it. Your energy level is much steadier and your fat loss progress just becomes a lot easier, right? So the bottom line is build those meals around protein, not snacks, not vegetables, not carbs. Let the protein, let that ground beef be the main source of that meal. And you can build around, you can have some vegetables around it. And this way you're able to hit those numbers and everything else just starting to feel in the right place. Now we're in happy number two and you might be feeling a little overwhelmed, but I'm telling you my friend, don't you worry because I got you covered. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a 30 day plan that's gonna get you on track and it's gonna help you stay there. Zone two cardio is the type of movement that we typically call cardio exercise that elevates your heart rate somewhat. Now, before we get all sciencey, this is what zone two looks like. I'm able to finish my sentences, my breathing is calm, my pace is fair, doesn't feel like I'm climbing a mountain. I'm just teaching my engine. So Huberman says 200 minutes a week in zone two. But does it really mean 200 minutes of this type of cardio every week? Apparently not. Well, stick around and I'm gonna tell you why. Let me explain to you what happens to your body when you do zone two cardio in English. Let's say inside your muscles are tiny ovens called mitochondria. Now with zone two, that oven is set to medium heat. Now your muscles little ovens burn fat clean with oxygen, almost no smoke. Now do this steady, often, and your body upgrades the kitchen. More ovens, better wiring, and smooth energy. Now push into zone three and four and the chemistry changes. More sugar burn, higher lactate. That's great training, but it's not the zone two stimulus. So it doesn't count towards that 150 to 200 minutes. All right, here's some good news. Most of us have a very busy life, right? We don't have the luxury of doing tons of cardio that adds up to 200 minutes. Well, what Dr. Andrew Huberman says is that all of that 200 minutes doesn't necessarily have to come from cardio. We can choose activities that we do during the day and amp it up a little bit to add up to that 200. I personally walk with my dog faster, maybe play the ball with him. When I'm running through the day, I try to do it with a little bit of pace. And I do have a fitness tracker, so believe it or not, it does add up to that 200. Now here is how to actually do zone two without overthinking it. Pick something your joints like, a brisk walk, easy jog or biking. Set a pace where you can say a full sentence without grabbing extra air. If you can mostly breathe through your nose and still chat, you're in the pocket. You don't necessarily need a fitness tracker, but if you're huffing, that's too hard. Save it for the hard training. Start with 15 to 20 minutes, add five minutes each week until you're at 30 to 45 minutes per week. Make that two to four sessions, you're almost at 200. And lots of 10 to 20 minute brisk chunks, post meal walks, daily life counts if it's steady. No stop, green flags. You finish feeling better than when you started. Next week, the same heart rate, 
gives you a slightly faster pace. Red flags, hands on knees, can't talk, side stitch, that's not zone two. That's a different workout, remember that. I've been lifting for about 15 years and when you lift, you try to avoid cardio as much as you can. And if anything, when I was trying to lose weight, I would get on a treadmill and it would be just a boring 45 minutes walk. But after, you know, listening to Dr. Andrew Huberman and Dr. Peter Adia, I understood the importance of being outside. I was like, let me take this thing outside. And if you know, running outside is a lot tougher than on the treadmill. You know, it just takes a bigger and a tougher toll on your body, especially on your ankles. And I am telling you, at 41, it took me about a month, maybe, maybe a month and a half for me to start running without pain at a slow pace at zone two. And now with these three sessions of runnings during the week and with what I'm implementing during the day to reach that 200 minutes, I'm telling you, I'm already starting to feel the difference of it, okay? The recovery zone on my whoop has stayed green for the first time. Now, what does that actually mean? Better sleep, better heart rate variability, and better resting heart rate. Now with zone two training, I'm starting to feel like I'm finally starting to build that engine instead of faking it. All right, so if you want these habits to actually stick, I made a blueprint 30 day plan that's gonna help you get there. In this 30 day plan, you get an AM PM light checklist, your exact protein grams by body weight, a zone two finder, a weekly calendar, and a habit tracker you can tick off. You can download this plan from the description, print it, put it on your fridge, get after it, and tell me how it went. See you on the next one, my friend.